think I picked up a camera when I was about 16 years old and you know, started making short comedies with my friends. But it wasn't until I got to college that I realized documentary was going to be you know, my life's work. It's really my passion and I'm sure it will be for a long, long time. It's just an exciting way to learn about the world and to experience cultures and worlds that you wouldn't otherwise have the opportunity to. Dear Kay, I've wanted to write to you for so long, but I didn't have the guts to. I was scared of denial, scared that you might not respond at all. I was really scared, but I'm happy that I did it in the end. Could you tell me a little about yourself? Where do you live now? Who is my dad? What is he like? I'm pretty sure that you had a good reason to give me up for adoption, and if there wasn't one, then that is okay with me too. It's just that I have had this bottled up in me for so long that the questions have just started pouring out of me. I just want to know who I am and where I come from. Well, the film follows a young woman named Avery. She's African-American, adopted and raised by white Jewish lesbians in Brooklyn. Uh, she has two adopted brothers also, a younger brother who's Korean, an older brother who's Puerto Rican and black. And at the age of about 16, she decides she would like to get in touch with her birth family and learn a bit more about her roots. So she reaches out and makes contact with her birth mom, which kind of sets her on a journey um, of self-discovery, really, trying to figure out, you know, issues of family and race and identity that she hadn't grappled with before. You have your brother, and you met your sister. Not that you really know her, but like your brother you had an interaction with. So I just always saw it as I was the one who didn't know anything about my family. Because she had the pictures, I didn't have pictures. You know what I mean? You know, you can't ask a picture a question. Avery was originally my student when she was 10 years old and I was teaching a filmmaking class to middle school students at a private Jewish day school. So you can imagine she kind of stood out. She was you know, one of a small handful of kids of color at the school and she was in my very first class and you know, beyond standing out because of her race, she was just incredibly charismatic and bright and exciting and alive and uh, you know, a thrill to work with. So we kept in touch over the years. When she left and went off to high school, she would come back and visit me and, you know, keep me abreast of what was going on in her world. And um, it was about the age of 16 when I said, look, I think we should tell your story together. The call actually didn't approach me. She approached my parents um, and asked them first if it was, you know, something that they would be open to. And, um, you know, they said it was fine by, I guess they had spoken by, they said it was fine by them, but it was up to me. Um, and I think I got back to Nicole within three or four days. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I did have to think about it. It was a truly collaborative effort. Um, Avery is a co-writer of this film, and um, she was instrumental both in front of the camera and behind the camera. She came into the edit room regularly to offer her feedback and help to direct the film. The second I put the letter in the mailbox, I panicked. And then I settled myself down, and now I'm going through that panicking stage again. <laughs> this is an award um, from the Writers Guild of America um, for screenwriting, which Avery and Nicole were um, co-screenwriters for the film. The main pieces that I actually wrote for the film were the letters to my birth mom. We used some of those. And um, I definitely had a big part in the voiceovers. Um, we tried a bunch of different ways. They'd show me what it was that I, you know, we needed to work on. Um, and, you know, if it was, you know, a paragraph or something really intense, usually I would just sit down, think it out, try to write it out. Um, there were definitely times where we just, you know, I couldn't get it. And Nicole would say, so how about we try this? And, you know, it really, dip you know, we do a bunch of different takes and whatever worked out the best worked out. I want to know who I am, who my birth parents are. I want to know where I come from, family background, more than what I have. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you exactly who you are, okay. all right? You are my child. <laughs> you are Bobby's grandchild. <laughs> You're his sister. Yeah. You're his sister. And you are the biological child and the biological sibling of all those people. Well, it's interesting because, you know, I came to know Avery's family through Avery. I first connected with her and it took a while before I met her moms and her brothers. Um, but, you know, my identity is much closer to her moms as a Jewish lesbian and as somebody who would like to adopt myself one day. Um, 
so I think one of the things that I struggled with while making this film was understanding, you know, where my experience was were, uh, how I could connect to Avery and how we were worlds apart, and to kind of address those discrepancies, you know, I did a number of things. First, and I think most importantly, I brought Avery in as a really strong collaborator on the project rather than showing her the film at the end of the day. And secondly, you know, my film crew was an interracial family, much like Avery's, and that was important to me too. We all really brought a different perspective to the table, and you'll see all of that in the filmmaking. Well, I think ultimately the film is really about family and, you know, what makes a family? How do you define it? And uh, interestingly enough, it doesn't become for Avery very much about same-sex parenting, having lesbian moms. Um, that was never really an issue that she felt affected her own growth and development. However, having two white parents and not having an African-American role model consistently in her life was difficult for her. And um, so that's something that comes up in the film quite a bit. Frankly, I want it to get out to other kids, not necessarily kids that are adopted, um, or, you know, interracial or anything like that, you know, because all kids at some point in their life go through a hard time. Well, we're adding, you know, screenings to the website all the time, so we have a few festivals lined up for the summer, and then we'll see where it's headed in the fall. But ultimately, this is a film that'll air on the series POV, which is a, a national PBS series, and that'll happen about a year from now. I've definitely learned a lot. Um, one thing I've learned is um, keeping everything inside isn't necessarily the best way, so that's one big thing I've learned. My name is Nicole Opper, and you're watching Real Black.